Okay, today is October 13, 2011. We're doing lesson 2.5. So that is your textbook page. We're going to do example 1. So it's page 112. Okay. That's in your textbook. And blue notebook. 119. What's on the next page? 120. Okay. Sorry, guys. 119. Okay. <coughs> um, this is a special case. Uh, where you'll be finding, you can look at this and see that there's a square root of the first number and a square root of the last number. And the book will show you a special way of doing that. They use a formula that looks roughly like this. Squared plus maybe x plus b squared. So your formula roughly looks like this. a squared, a times b, and plus b squared. And you would factor out the square roots to figure out this equation, and you'd end up with an equation that has uh, a, yeah, yeah, don't worry, I know this is very confusing, plus b squared. I'm not going to show you the way the book does it, okay? If you look at one of your examples, they're roughly referring to this. The, re the way we've been factoring before works just the same. It works just as good for an example like this. So, we're going to find the factors of a, if you guys remember, we have a x squared plus b x plus c. Whoa. Okay. So, I'm going to find the factors of c and the factors of a. So, factors of 9, 1 and 9, 3 and 3. All right. Factors of 4, 1 and 4, 2 and 2. So we have our columns. We have to, the product of the two columns when we multiply, have to add up to our B, which is positive 12. Okay. So we're going to go by trial and error through these columns. We'll start with the first column. 1 times 1 and 9 times 4 gives us 1 and 36. Is that going to work? 1 by 4, 9 by 1 will give us 9 and 4. Will that work? No. Okay. So we've tried the first column. 1 by 2, 9 by 2 gives us 2 and 18. Will they work? No. And if we go across, we're going to have the exact same thing. So those won't work either. So what we figured out is we know we're not using this first column for the first terms in brackets. Remember, what we're trying to do is get this into two brackets. One of these columns will be filling in the first terms in the brackets, and then one of these columns will be filling in oops, the second terms in the brackets. Okay? So we know that doesn't work. So we have to be using our 3 and 3. We're going to try, like, try and error again. 3 and 1 and 3 and 4 gives us 3 and 12. Any combination of those make 12? And if we go across, we're going to end up at the same thing again. So we know that won't work. So again, this column doesn't work. We're kind of stuck with what we have. Let's Hopefully this works. We'll try it out. 3 by 2 and 3 by 2 gives us 6 and 6. Do those both work? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to draw my arrow. So I'm multiplying 3 by 3. Sorry, 3 by 2 and 3 by 2. We're getting positive 6 for both. So, when I go to put them in their columns, my first terms are going to be 3x in both columns. And if you remember, that's a 2. Okay. Now, because I multiply 3 by this 2, this 2 has to go in the opposite column. Is it going to make a difference in this, check, in this case? No, because they're the exact same numbers. Okay. Now here's the only other step. We've got our 3x plus 2, 3x plus 2. Because they're the exact same thing, I want you to combine it to one bracket. 3x plus 2, what? That's it. Okay. The book gives you this whole other way of doing it. 
I want you to just continue using the way we do for factoring. And at the end, if you notice the two brackets are the same, just put them into one bracket. Okay, example two. We're doing a difference of squares. So if you look at this question, this one is written up a little differently. In fact, the b at x that we're usually used to seeing, if you guys remember, we're used to seeing questions that say ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay? If you look at this question here, there really is no bx. It's looking more like this. A x squared plus, sorry, not plus, minus c. In order for this to work, it's called a difference of squares. You guys remember way back elementary school what difference means? Subtract. Subtract. Okay. So the only time these special cases will work is if there's a subtraction sign between them. And because it's squares, you have to be able to square root the first and last term. Okay? You have to be able to find the square roots of those. So those are the only way these will work. Otherwise, we'd put not factorable. Okay? The way I was showing you before, you cannot factor this question that way. So we're going to rewrite it down here. The question was f at x is equal to 4x squared minus, that's our subtraction, 9. So I can find the square root of both of these terms. And we go into our factored form. Remember, we always have our two brackets, our first terms and our last terms. So I find the square root of 4x squared. Square root of 4x squared, if we do it on the side, is equal to 2x. That's a squared sign. Okay? So that means my first term will be 2x, and my second first term will be 2x. Then I find the square root of 9. Square root of 9 on the side is 3. So the last, top, the last terms are both 3. Here's the only, I guess, tricky part. One of the signs has to say plus, one of the signs has to say minus. Does it matter which one? Nope. Okay. Somebody asked why does it have to be a plus and minus sign? So I'm going to show you why this works. Okay, so let's say now I have this bracket because factoring is the opposite of our expanding and simplifying. I'm going to expand and simplify. This is how you would check. This is how you would check any of your factoring questions to make sure they're right. They would eventually have to go back and equal what we started with. So we had started with f or 4x squared minus 9. When I expand and simplify this, we'll see if that's what happens. So when we do FOIL, I'm going to multiply this number by both. So I get 4x squared minus 6x. Then I'm going to multiply the 3 by both. In which case, I'm going to get plus 6x minus 9, 3 times 3. When I combine like terms, negative 6 and positive 6 will cancel each other out. So I get 4x squared minus 9. The reason we have a plus and a minus is so that our middle terms cancel each other out. One's a plus and one's a minus. They'll cancel out, so we'll have only our A and our C terms. 